So here on the Turbo Mix Games YouTube channel, I've already made videos on most of the different types of data components we have available to us right now in Unity's Entity Component System. Um, there's still a couple more topics that I do want to go over related to data components, but I think it'd be a good idea to start diving into systems and how we can actually use systems a little bit more effectively and some of the cool things that we can do with them. Um, so I just wanted to make today's video as kind of like an introduction to systems, basically just talking about like what they are, how to create them, going through kind of the basic life cycle and kind of the uh, main you know event functions for these systems and talk about a few of the attributes that will be helpful for us to control the life cycle of our systems. So anyways, before we get into it, I'd just like to say if you do find today's video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's Entity Component System and their data-oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. So for starters, what is a system? A system is basically just a way to transform data in our games. So what does that really mean? It basically is kind of the behavior and the logic um, to make things happen in our game, to um, you know make things move around on the screen, or when certain things happen in our game, we can kind of trigger other things happening. You know, this is all the um, kind of actual things happening in our game. Of course, Unity's Entity Component System is a data-oriented programming paradigm, um, and so our components are the data, and then our systems are basically what transforms the data. Um, you know, takes it from you know, a set of certain values and moves them into another set of certain values. And when that happens, you know, things start happening in our game. Systems are absolutely essential to the whole entity component system because without them, you know, everything in our game would just be static and boring. So let's go ahead and start creating some of our own systems. As you see, I typically break things out under my scripts folder into um, an authoring and mono folder, components and tags folder, and a systems folder just to kind of break things out. So inside our system, we can just go ahead and create a new script here. We're just gonna go ahead and create a normal C-sharp script, but it should be noted that we can actually go down to the bottom and there is an option for ECS and we can create just like a system here that has kind of a basic template of a system. I'm not gonna do that in this case. I don't really like the template that it gives you by default. Um, and it also gives me an opportunity for us to show you how we can create our own systems from scratch here. So here we can just give this class a name. We'll just go ahead and call it intro system. And we'll go ahead and open up this in our editor of choice. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna go ahead and clear out all the default stuff, even the libraries up at the top, because we're going to actually be using a special library for Unity ECS which we can get to by saying using unity.entities. So here we'll actually define the class of our system. So of course this is going to be a public class called intro system, and this is going to inherit from system base. So system base is the, we want, the one that we want to be inheriting from. If you come across some references to some older ECS code or even some of my earlier videos on Unity ECS, you'll see that we used to inherit from things like component system or job component system. That's all being phased out. So system base is uh, definitely the way to go for now. It's a lot better and easier to use, gives us a lot more features, that kinds of things. So definitely it's not only you know, best practice to inherit from system base, but it is you know easier to use. So we are getting this red line under because we do need to implement um, a special event function, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Um, so I just kind of want to go through the whole life cycle of a system, um, just kind of starting top to bottom here. Now what I'm gonna be showing you here are event systems. And these are very similar to the event systems in mono behaviors. You know, we have things like awake, start, update, things that are basically automatically called by Unity. Now, one important thing to note about these built-in event functions is that they will all run on the main thread, meaning all code executed inside of them will be running on the main thread. Now, inside them, we can schedule jobs to run on worker threads, However, all code inside these event functions will always be ran on the main thread. So we'll go ahead and create the first event function, which is the onCreate function. You see that it is a protective override void called onCreate. Um, you can leave in this base.onCreate function or not. 
Um, if you actually go into the source, it literally doesn't do anything right now. So I usually take it out and then I kind of define my logic that I want in here. So for now, we can just do a debug.log on create. So then um, when we go and run this, we can see when our on create function is being called. Now the on create function, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's very similar to the awake function in uh, just regular Unity mono behaviors. Basically the on create function is invoked as soon as the system um, is basically created in the game world and this function will only ever be invoked one time throughout the duration of the life cycle of this system the next one we'll go over is the on start running so again you'll see it's a protective override void on start running and this function is kind of like a combination of the start and on enable functions inside of uh, unity mono behaviors I'm gonna say that because it's gonna be called once after the on create function um, and once before the first update iteration, um, but it also is called every single time the system resumes running. And we can talk about why systems start and stop executing in just a moment here. But basically this is going to be called once on the creation of the system and then every single time the system is re-enabled and starts running again. So that's kind of why it's called the on start running. So we can just put a little debug log in there for the next time that we go ahead and run that. All right, so moving along, we'll go on to the, uh, probably the most important one, which is the on update function. Uh, the reason is this is the most important because this is the only one that is required uh, for the system base class, you'll see that uh, that red squiggly line has gone away up at the top here. So we do need to actually have this on update function defined here for every system that we create. Now, sometimes you might have a system where you actually don't even put anything into the on update function. You just have some things in maybe uh, on create or on start running, but we always do need to have, you know, at least this signature of the on update here. Now, the on update function, obviously it's very similar to the update function in Unity Mono Behaviors. So, you know, all the code inside this on update function is going to be executing every single frame. Well, I should clarify, it's not going to be executing every single frame ever, no matter what. It's going to be executing every frame the system is enabled and has work to do. So of course, you know, you can probably understand if the system is enabled or disabled, you know, we can kind of manually, there's an enabled property and we can just set that to true or false if we want a system to, you know, stop executing or whatever. Um, but the other key part of that is whether the system has work to do. So basically what that means is, you know, later on we might go into um, actually defining um, some entities dot for each functions and some jobs, you know, basically whenever we have an entity query, you can watch my video on entity queries to learn a little bit more about those. But basically what this means is if there are no entities that match the specific entity query that we're trying to update, then the update function is not going to run and the system is basically going to, you know, stop running. And then if some entities appear in the game world that do fit the criteria for this on update function, then the system is going to resume running again. And so when it does that, the on start running function is going to be called again. And then the on update loop is just going to continue executing every single frame. Now it should be noted, just like I mentioned, all these update functions always run on the main thread um, and the update function is no different. So basically, um, you know, the idea here is we don't wanna be necessarily doing any complex work inside the on update function. But inside the on update function, this is where we can actually schedule jobs that do kind of the more complex work. So jobs are scheduled from the main thread with, within the on update function, and then they can run on worker threads. And so these are probably going to be the three most common event functions that you can use, but there are still a couple more available at our disposal. So there is, of course, the on stop running. So this is going to be called anytime. Um, you know, there are no entities that match the query, you know, the on stop running function will be invoked or if the system is, you know, destroyed or disabled or something like that, then the on stop running function will get invoked. And this is also similar to the on disable event function from Unity Mono Behaviors, if you're familiar with that. And then the on stop running function is called immediately before the final function that we're going to be going over, which is the on destroy function, which is of course very similar to the on destroy function from Unity Mono Behaviors. And basically, as you can imagine, this event function is called when the system is destroyed. So let's head over to Unity. We'll enter play mode and we can see what things happen here in our console. So you see first the on create function has been invoked. Next, the on start running function has been invoked. You'll see that these are both just running one time each. And then the on update function, this is going to be um, executing every single frame. So you'll see that it's already at, you know, like 7,000 um, iterations here. 
And then when we actually go ahead and exit play mode, you'll see that the on stop running function is invoked. And then finally, the on destroy function has been invoked. So you'll notice that this system kind of just started executing without us literally doing anything. And basically the reason for that is Unity auto discovers the systems in our project and then instantiates them at runtime. Uh, so we actually, if you go over into the entity debugger here, you'll see that under the simulation system group, this intro system has now been basically automatically added to this group here. And that's why it begins to run in the console here. All right, so real quick, I just wanted to show off kind of how we can modify this system lifecycle a little bit. Uh, so you see that I've modified the on update function. So basically we have this entity query um, that's going to run on anything that has a capsule tag. Right now it's not doing anything, but I basically just wanted to do that to demonstrate how when we do not have any entities that match this entity query, this on update function, this entire on update function does not run at all. So you'll see that I have the debug.log on update outside of uh, this entities for each here. When we come back over to Unity and enter play mode, you'll see that only the on create function runs so far. Uh, so the on start and on update, none of that is running yet. None of that is actually going to run until we actually spawn a capsule into our world. So I've created a separate system that basically spawns these capsules into our world. You see the on start running function uh, runs one time, and then now the on update function is running every single frame. Uh, so now we can actually just go ahead and delete this entity. You'll see the on stop running function has been invoked, and the on update function is no longer updating. Now I can go ahead and spawn another capsule into the world, and you'll see that the on start running function has now been invoked a second time and the on update function continues to update. Same thing as before when I destroy the capsule, the on update function stops and then we get the on stop running function um, has been invoked. And then when I exit play mode, the system gets destroyed and then the on destroy uh, method has been invoked. Now we can influence how this system updates a little bit further by adding some attributes to this system. Um, so one that I wanna point out is the always update system. So basically what this means is the system is going to always update no matter what, no matter if there are no entities that match the query or not. Um, so you'll see if we come back to Unity, we'll enter play mode. You'll see that even though we do not have an entity, capsule entity in the scene yet, the on create function, on start running function have both been invoked and the on update function is continually invoking every single frame. Same thing if we just go ahead and spawn a capsule into our world, you know, on update function continues to keep running. I go ahead and destroy the entity. You'll see that the, you know, on update function continues to run and we don't get the on stop running function called until we actually exit out of play mode. And then the other one that I wanted to show is kind of the opposite. So it's called the disable auto creation. So this simply means that the system is not going to run. It's just an easy way to uh, disable the function and um, it's you know really helpful for debugging when we want to kind of test out different systems we can disable one system and enable another system so see if I go ahead and enter play mode uh, you'll see that nothing has been printed out in the console not even the on create function uh, same thing we can put capsules into the world and destroy them um, and that system is still just not running at all. Now, this tag is also useful because when we do that, we can use it to uh, manually call the update function either from other systems or from mono behaviors. So I actually did a video on this. There uh, was a previous fixed time step workaround that we had to use in the past, basically where from the fixed update function inside of uh, mono behavior, we would basically manually invoke the update function um, of a system and that's how we could get kind of a fixed update behavior. Um, things have changed a little bit so we don't have to do fixed update things exactly that way anymore, but still the same concepts apply if we do want to do any uh, manually iteration over systems. Um, which is something that I actually did in my Turbo's Game of Life project. You can uh, check out the video that I did on that, a few videos previous on the channel. Anyways, that's just about all I have to say in today's video. So I hope this was kind of a good introduction into systems and gave you a little bit more insight on what they are, how to create them, and kind of give you an understanding of how the whole system life cycle works. I know there are just kind of like a little bit of quirks to it here and there. So anyways, if you did enjoy today's video and you found it useful, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and the data oriented technology stack. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev discord. Thank you.